Michael, thank you so much for joining us here at Fun yeah. Forum. We've heard a lot today already about the unpredictable landscape that we have ahead of us. What do you see as the key opportunities going forward at the moment? Yeah, I think the difficult thing in, in, so, in some respects is that it has been uh, predictable and that asset, almost all asset prices have risen. We've had a very strong start of the year. Um, and we're doing a number of things now, I think, in terms of generating further return. We've sold some US equities, we've bought protection in the portfolio, uh, inequities are moving to markets like Europe, uh, Australia, for example. Uh, FX is interesting because it's the only asset class where people are actually pricing politics. Um, and there we're long the dollar relative to the euro. Uh, but as a hedge in the portfolio, we have a long position uh, in the Japanese yen. So you s described it there as pricing politics. It is a, an amazing geopolitical environment we're in, and it obviously is having an impact. It's a sort of binary world where I think when you talk to people outside markets and, and, and those within markets as well, uh, the conversation I think veers a lot towards Brexit, Trump, etc. Uh, but the interesting thing is that markets haven't really uh, reacted that, to that. And the reason for this is that the business cycle globally is, has been very, very strong and getting, uh, getting stronger uh, and more, uh, more synchronised. Uh, so there are parts of markets I think that are playing politics. Uh, I always regard the currency of a country is a sort of PE ratio and you see that uh, Turkey had some volatility earlier on this year, uh, South Africa and of course the pound has been the shock absorber uh, of Brexit. You talk there about global strength in economy but is there a move away from globalisation uh, because of politics and is that going to have an impact? Well this is one of our key views is that the, the period of globalisation we've come to know for the last 30 years uh, is now over and we're moving to a world maybe of three or four poles, we're moving to a multipolar world uh, of big regions who are big economically but importantly who do things very differently uh, legally for example. Uh, in terms of their, their internet space, uh, China is a very, very good example of this. And I think this will focus investors' minds much more on national and regional champion companies as opposed to global companies. You mentioned China there. We've heard this morning as well that China are looking more and more at sort of global infrastructure projects, if you like. So that's a new movement as well that's away from traditional ones, maybe. It, it is, and in many respects, this is sort of the second or third wave of China's development. But it's a, it's a phase of development with big uh, geostrategic uh, imprints uh, as far you know, across Asia uh, on countries like Iran. It will have implications for Europe as well. Um, and, and I think people have the sense that China is beginning to, to balance the US in many respects in terms of its trade um, and economic imprint across the, the rest of the world. Now one of the other hot topics apart from geopolitics if you like is inflation. Tell me about what your thoughts on that are at the moment. I, I think the story of the last year really has been the, the move uh, in economies and markets away from pricing and deflation. Uh, in January, February 2016 people were very worried about uh, the Chinese economy US markets, Europe, etc. And now we've normalized. That normalization has led to a big flow of funds. Uh, we don't think we're going to have uh, an uptick in inflation. Some markets are not pricing inflation, and inflation so far is actually quite discreet. Uh, you see markets pricing it in technology stocks because they cause deflation, but they get, a, uh, they get higher profits as a result of that. And also select property markets around Europe and the world uh, where you have kind of monetary pegs. Hong Kong, uh, Switzerland's got a very strong uh, currency relationship to the euro, for example, because of the, the SMB, and you have very high property prices there. So it's in, it's in uh, discrete places, but it's not across the board yet. You touched on it briefly in a previous answer. You talked about regulation and, and what that creates and different geographies having different regulation. Is, is that something that is, is proving a tricky thing to navigate to with perhaps a, a less globalised situation in the world? I, I think in terms of some of investable assets, the big regulatory question is the US um, and the extent to which uh, regulation is softened across a number of industries in the US by the Trump administration and whether they can reduce taxes. Um, and I think that's probably not going to happen this year. So where do you see the greatest opportunities lying? You're having conversations over this week. You've got 1,400 members of the industry yeah. here to talk with. What do you think you'll be talking about and what do you hope to take away? Okay, so if I, if I go to the end of this year, I think the, for, for investment managers, the three key variables will be uh, volatility. It's incredibly low and whether we have spikes in volatility. Uh, related to that are, are tech stocks, uh, who have been the repository of a lot of fund flows in the last maybe eight months. Um, and then the US economy. So when we get to uh, December of this year, 
Uh, I think it will either go two ways. One, it will heat up, uh, or and or people may be talking about the next US recession. Um, I think it will be in, in pretty firm shape uh, as we get to the end of this year. And we have interesting times potentially in Europe with Italy we, and, and Brexit and, and what uh, the, the UK election might mean to that now as well. I, I, I think so. I think, I think people are habitually used to writing Europe off. And um, I, I, I go through periods of, of getting requests for, on, you know, will the euro survive? And I, I, I firmly believe it will survive. Um, and I think the election of Emmanuel Macron is, is really a big game changer, not just in France, uh, but across Europe. And, and I think that will help to direct uh, European politicians towards uh, means and measures to, for example, um, maybe not reduce Italy's debt, but apportion it in a way so it's less of a direct threat to the Eurozone. And at this conference, you hope to have conversations that will be real game changers? Uh, I, I think that the things that interest me are uh, technology uh, and content in our industry, the impact of technology on investing, the cost of investing. And also, I think what people are just beginning to eke out is the impact of technology on investing and its impact in markets. So the role of CTA funds, the role of ETFs, passive investing, and the, how, how that conditions, for example, volatility. You, you mentioned tech there. I can't miss what Pippa Malgram just said about blockchain and how the whole institution of what we do might change. What did you think about that, what she was saying I, I, about I, the disappearance firmly, of money, I, if you like? I firmly agree. Blo blockchain won't, uh, to, to my mind, blockchain is an accounting, it's a recording system. Um, which can disintermediate various financial uh, or, or account accounting services. Uh, it doesn't mean the disappearance uh, of money. It means just um, ledgering transactions in, in, in a, maybe in a, in a neater way. Um, but I think it can have really big implications uh, for the way companies transact, the way governments and politicians behave and transact as well. And is that a slow-moving beast, or are we going to see quite sort of busy? No, time I, I, I think this is going. This is happening happening quickly. I think a, a, a lot of the banks, the financial players, are looking at this as well. Uh, some central banks, such as the Bank of England, are, are very well advanced in terms of looking at all these areas and how to regulate them uh, and how to to adapt them. Interesting times ahead, Thank Michael. You. Thanks so much for joining us. Pleasure.